بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ناؤ دس از دا سیکنڈ ویڈیو وچ ہیز کوشچنز 26 ٹو 45 سولو آئی ہیو آلسو اپلوڈڈ اے ویڈیو وچ ہیز دیز ان سولو ون سو پلیز فرسٹ ڈو دوز اینڈ دین لک ایٹ دس ویڈیو کوشچن نمبر 26 دی گراف شوز دی ریٹ اف موومنٹ اف فور ڈفرنٹ سبسٹنسز اکراس اے میمبرین ناؤ پلیز لک ایٹ دس کوشچن ویری کیئرفلی اٹس اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ کوشچن دی سبسٹنسز شون ان دی گراف آر کاربن ڈائی آکسائیڈ ٹیسٹوسٹیرون ایتھینول اینڈ سوڈیم آئنز So the only polar molecule is sodium ions and that will not pass the phospholipid bilayer. So what will it need? It will need a channel protein. Now you have to understand is that channel proteins will become the limiting factor. And that is why this part levels off. Now the concentrations you've got to see is concentration difference across the membrane. Now look at this, 110. Look at this, 50, 10. So the concentration difference across the membrane is increasing. Also, the rate of movement is increasing in this direction. So this is what you are seeing here. And this is what you are seeing here, the concentration difference. So please always understand the question before you keep on doing anything. Which of the lines A to D represent the pattern of movement of sodium ions across a membrane? It has to be D. Why is it got to be D? Because it has leveled off. These others haven't leveled off. They are increasing. This is increasing. This is increasing. So as the concentration difference, so these are what? If you remember my video, these are small uncharged molecules. small uncharged molecules lipid passes through the phospholipid the hydrophobic part allows ethanol it's an organic solvent will pass through the phospholipid bilayer the testosterone is a lipid base so it will pass through the phospholipid bilayer carbon dioxide is a small molecule it will pass through the phospholipid bilayer by simple diffusion so higher the concentration gradient more the rate of diffusion so that is why you see a b and c are increasing but d has leveled off why because the channel proteins will become the limiting factor if there are three channel proteins if there are four channel proteins or five or 10 or 15 well that will become the limiting factor in the end so this is how you are supposed to think please remember think carefully when you are if you know the syllabus only then you can think if you don't know the syllabus well then you're going to make it up you're going to make a mess of it and of course then you must be the chungal quality of kid Then coming to question number 27, DNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds during DNA replication. Which of the statements A to D will not affect the rate of phosphodiester bond formation? So if it's an enzyme, temperature will affect, pH will affect, free nucleotide availability will affect. What will not affect will be the length of the DNA molecule. Will not affect because rate is per unit time. 10 phosphodiester bonds formed per unit time or 20 formed per unit time. So how is the length going to affect the rate? So this will not affect the rate of phosphodiester bond formation. Then coming to question number 28, the hydroxyl group of carbohydrates is polar and makes the molecule soluble in water. The greater the number of free hydroxyl groups as a proportion of the number of carbon atoms, the more soluble the carbohydrate. Which of the rows A to D lists the carbohydrate in order of most soluble to least soluble? So now what you have to understand is glucose is C6H12O6. C5 ribose is C5H10 something. Amylose is of course many, many glucose units joined together. Amylopectin is even more 1, 4 and 1, 6 bonds. So the answer is A because the it says the number of free hydroxyl as a proportion of the number of carbon atoms. So this is the one which was the catch in it. So this is how we have to do this. Then coming to question number 29. Carbon dioxide released during concentrated oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. The tertiary structure of hemoglobin is affected when carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid. This reaction releases hydrogen ions. Which of the statements A to D explain this change? Explain this change. So, carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid and this reaction releases hydrogen ions. Which of the statement? A, the release of hydrogen ion causes the pH to rise. which reduces hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. With more the hydrogen ion, pH will become less. The release of hydrogen causes the pH to rise, which increases hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Ye, this was reduces, this was increases. The release of hydrogen ions cause the pH to fall. Yes, that makes sense, which increases hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. The release of hydrogen causes pH to fall, which reduces. So there's an increase here and there's again a release here. So that makes sense now, causes the pH to fall, which reduces, you see more the carbon dioxide means more oxygen should be released. So the hemoglobin affinity for oxygen should decrease. Hemoglobin, oxygen, 
dosti friendship should decrease so that the oxygen is released more carbon dioxide means more respiration so if the oxygen is present there then there will be more aerobic respiration and anaerobic will be delayed so you have to understand is that the hemoglobin oxygen friendship must decrease the affinity means friendship or means affinity means liking or love so that is why the answer to 29 is d question number 30 during translocation of photosynthetic products in the phloem hydrogen ions are moved out of companion cells then sucrose enters the companion cells and moves through the plasmodes matter into the sieve tube which of the row correctly identify how these substances enter or leave you see uh, hydrogen ions out of the companion cell has to be active transport sucrose into the companion cell sucrose is water soluble so it has to be by facilitated diffusion and then the sucrose accompanies you see the hydrogen ions move back in and sucrose comes with it it's called co transport so that is why question number 30 answer is c active transport facilitated diffusion and then sucrose out of the companion cell through the plasmodes beta is simple diffusion question 31 swiss chard is a leafy green vegetable related to spinach some varieties have yellow stalks that are vacuoles containing yellow beta xanthine pigments the graph below shows the effect of temperature on the release of these pigments recorded as mean absorbance when measured with a calorimeter very important question calorimeter is very much part of the new syllabus it was deduced that the beta xanthines were released from the vacuole due to the denaturing of proteins in the tonoplast vacuolar membrane which letter a to d shows the temperature at which the proteins denature you see what you have to understand is what is mean absorbance the darker the color more the light is going to be absorbed if you pass water through pepsi or coke it's a very dark color all of it will be absorbed but if you pass it through seven up less light will be absorbed because it's clear it's sort of watery clear uh, in uh, to look at so what we have to understand is when is the mean absorbance increasing it's increasing here and then is leveling out because all of the pigment has leaked out so question number 31 the answer is c because that is the point at which the mean absorbance has increased there is an arrow here which says increased so mean absorbance has increased so that is why the answer is c question number 32 an investigation into how a change in sodium chloride concentration affects osmosis in potato cells concluded that the isotonic point of the potato was 0.25 m which of the statements a to d describes what is happening at the at the isotonic point in which inside and outside is the same there is a net movement of water from the sodium into the potato there is a net movement of water from the cytoplasm of the potato cells into the sodium there is no net movement of water into or out of the potato cell cytoplasm the movement of water into the potato is equal to the movement of water out of the potato cells so question number 32 the answer is d the movement is equal to the movement so there is actually no net movement but it is movement no net movement that is a very very an interesting way to mention it also but there is no such uh, option available so the movement of water into the potato is equal to the movement of water out of the potato cell okay coming on to now question number 33 the table shows four biological molecules and then component elements which of the row correctly identifies the elements in each molecule now atp adenosine triphosphate insulin is a protein molecule cholesterol is a fat molecule and sucrose is a carbohydrate now which of these rows is correct we've got to figure this out the answer is c carbon hydrogen oxygen sucrose carbon hydrogen oxygen cholesterol nitrogen and sulfur in insulin and nitrogen and phosphate in atp why because atp has a nitrogenous base and atp is adenosine triphosphate there is an adenine base which has nitrogen and adenosine triphosphate then coming on to question number 34 in human cells the tumor suppressor gene tb53 codes for a protein that interrupts the cell cycle if there is any damage to the dna and prevents the copying of damaged dna copying of damaged dna which of the stage a to d could tb53 interrupt in the cell cycle so there was a little catch in this question i mean i could have got this wrong as well prevents the copying of damaged dna so that means s phase will not take place s phase is the synthesis phase in which dna replication takes place now which is the stage before that is g1 so that means g1 was the answer because it says which of these stages could tp53 interrupt in the cell cycle 
The cell cycle, it says, codes for a protein that interrupts the cell cycle if there's any damage and prevents the copying of the damaged DNA. You see, DNA replication takes place in S phase of, in the S phase of interphase. So if S phase is not going to take place, so what is before the S phase is G1, G1, S and then G2. So this is a little catchy question. Maybe I don't know. I would have also misread it. Question 35, the diagram below shows one method of transport across a cell membrane inside of a cell and outside of the cell. Something is thrown from inside to the outside. So that has to be exocytosis. Not very difficult, easy question. Question number 36, the diagram below shows the structure of plasma membrane. Which labels A to D indicates a component of the membrane that can affect its fluidity? The answer is D, but why is it D? It's because cholesterol. What affects the fluidity is cholesterol. And then you have, this is a glycoprotein. Then this is just some sort of an enzyme or a protein here on this side. And then this is a channel protein, which is on this side. So fluidity is affected by cholesterol. So cholesterol is going to affect the fluidity of the membrane. Now question number 37, the diagram shows the transport of two molecules across a plasma membrane. Now this has to be a small uncharged molecule or is crossing the phospholipid bilayer. Small uncharged molecule. This has going through a channel protein, tissue fluid back into it and that's something called Z. Which row A to D correctly identifies the molecule being transported and the mechanism of transport across the plasma membrane? Now, the answer is D. Why is the answer D? Because oxygen is the small molecule. Glucose cannot cross the phospholipid bilayer. So this has to be oxygen. So oxygen by diffusion and then this is coming through glucose by diffusion as well. And this is facilitated diffusion because it's through a channel protein but it is from a high concentration to a low concentration. You see there are three here and there's one here. So it's high concentration and it's from the tissue fluid. So they have mixed up two chapters, the heart chapter and this chapter. So that is why this was the answer. Then of course comes the question number 38. DNA is made up of two polynucleotide chains. Which of the bonds A to D forms between two nitrogen bases holding the two polynucleotide chains together? Hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds, so adenine and thymine 2, cytosine and guanine 3. So hydrogen bonds which hold the nitrogen bases together. And I'm sure somebody would have said phosphodiester because they are a whole lot younger. Question number 39, the structure of biological molecule is shown. Which of the following A to D correctly describes this molecule? Is it a pentose or a hexose? First decide that. Well, it's not a hexose, it's a pentose definitely. It's a pentose monosaccharide glucose. Sorry, glucose is a hexose. It's not a pentose. Ribose is, so that's why the answer is D. You see, you have to be very clear. Hexoses and pentoses. Ribose and deoxyribose are pentose, five carbon. Hexose is glucose, fructose. Which of the following A to D could be a product of breaking a peptide bond during a hydrolysis reaction? So peptide bond is between amino acids. So which one looks like an amino acid? You have to figure that out. That was not very difficult. Now it is a little tricky question. I like it. This was the difference. This was the only difference. No, you have to realize is the amino acid for question number 40 is A is the answer. This one was correct because you see hydrolysis means when they've added in the water so you have to know what is condensation and what is hydrolysis. When a peptide bond is formed, they said breaking of a peptide bond. So water has to be added. So the hydrogen and the, the OH and OH and H split. And that is why you found this was the difference. Good question. Question 41, the diagram below shows the effect of changing substrate concentration on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction, rate of reaction substrate. So this is the diagram that they want you to see. Which of the following graphs A to D shows how a non-competitive inhibitor would affect the rate of this reaction, this reaction at the top, which we just saw. So you can see how they're all different. Substrate concentration is on the x-axis, rate of reaction is on the y-axis. Here also, this was the situation. And that is why the answer is A, because the non-competitive inhibitor would have attached and would have 
so if you had 100 active sites and 90 have been uh, attached with the non competitive the only 10 active sites would be left and that's why the rate of reaction would be slower and would level off much earlier so the answer is this the diagram below shows an internal view of the mammalian heart with the atria removed so valves can be seen so you see this is the heart like this and they have taken a section like this and they are showing you from the top now they've said which of the valves labeled A to D is pushed upon by oxygenated blood entering a ventricle. Oxygenated blood entering a ventricle. Now, oxygenated blood entering a ventricle would be what? Pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein bringing uh, blood to the left atrium and then it will cross the Ventricle. Oxygenated blood is which side? Left side. The bicuspid valve. Please understand the question. The question is very, very tricky. As you can see in the diagram, oxygenated blood would be entering through the pulmonary vein and this would be coming here into the left atrium and then left atrium to left ventricle would be through the bicuspid valve. Left side has a bicuspid valve, right side has a tricuspid valve. So this is going to be the tricuspid valve. This is not the answer. The answer is C. A and D are the aortic and the uh, pulmonary valves, pulmonary artery in the beginning of the pulmonary artery and the beginning of the aorta. So what you have to understand is which one is to which side. That is how you want to figure it out. Okay, so 42, the answer was C. Why C? Because that's the bicuspid valve. There are two flaps. Here there are three flaps. So this is the tricuspid valve. Now coming to question number 43, which of the following A to D show the reaction catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase? Carbonic anhydrase does what? It combines carbon dioxide and water to form H2CO3. So the answer is A. Of course, this is something carbonic anhydrase is part of the new syllabus. You better know it very well. The diagram below shows a pathogen, reverse transcriptase, capsid, RNA, glycoprotein, lipid, envelope, protease. Which of the options A to D is the disease caused by this pathogen? Yes, it's a virus, so it has to be HIV or AIDS. Very obvious question. Nothing very technical. The table below shows the stages of the cell cycle. Which rows A to D show the correct order of the different stages? Now, last question. The table below shows the stages of the cell cycle. Which rows A to D show the correct order of different stages? Now, what we need to do is we need to revise the cell cycle so that everybody knows in which order they are going to be. Now, as we all know, if we are going to talk about 1 is G2, if you say 1 is G2, then G2 is here. Then after G2 is mitosis, right? And then it's cytokinesis. And then it is G1. And then it is S phase. So it's any sequence that they can ask you this question in. So uh, actually how I teach you all is G1, then I say S phase, and then I say G2, and then I say mitosis, and then cytokinesis. So well, it's any order that they're going to ask you this question on. So that is why the answer is C. But please revise the cell cycle, and you must know which order this is. Whichever order they're going to give you, they're going to just confuse you a little bit and see how well you know the cell cycle. So that completes this video on the MCQs. Wish you all the best of luck and uh, thank you very much.